Hi, my name is Noah. I'm the product expert here at On The Clock, and today we're going to be going over some main features that we offer within our system. The first area we're going to take a look at in the site is our Time Clock Settings page. So if you click this Settings tab right here, and then select Time Clock Settings, here is going to be the hub for a lot of the major settings that we offer within On The Clock. Here under basic settings, we do have the time zone, and you can set that up for any time zone that your company works within. And then we do have the switch for auto adjust for daylight savings. And below that, we do have our pay period type, where you can select of one of our four options for pay periods. For weekly and biweekly, you will get the pay period start date, and that's just going to be the date you select. So basically, it's going to give you the start date of each of your pay periods. And then once you select semi-monthly, it's going to ask you the first day of your first pay period and the first day of your second pay period. So if you were first through the 15th, you would want to select one in the first box and then 16 in the second box. And then start day of work week, you would just enter what day of the week your work week starts on so that we can track your overtime correctly. And then once you go to monthly, it's going to give you the start day of pay period again and then the start day of work week, just like the last one. Under the options section, we do have the option to set up punch rounding. So if you would like to round your punches for your employees to the nearest sixth minute or 15th minute, or you can turn that off completely. We do have the time card audit trail that will allow you to see any changes that are made on the time cards by your employees, by managers, or by administrators. And then below that, we do have our admin and manager as well as our employee time card approval. You can turn this on just so that at the end of your pay period, your employees can go ahead and they can approve their time. And then if you want, you can turn this on right here and this will require your employees to at least write a message when they are approving their time cards. And then one of our newer features is our photo attachments. This will allow an employee when they're clocking out to leave an attachment with their punch out. So it could be a picture of the project they're working on or maybe a receipt that they are needing to show you. The next section we're going to look at is the advanced settings tab. So what you can do here is this is going to be all the columns that you would see on your time cards page. So if you would like to see overtime, uh, any of the PTO categories, the times that your employees have punched in and out, you would turn these switches on here. By default, we do always have the total and regular hours turned on. And also in these two boxes to the right, you can change the name as they would appear on the time card columns or in the export. So you could change overtime one just to overtime if you'd wish. Under this section time formatting, you can select the option to whether have your time clock run on a 12 hour clock or a 24 hour clock, better known as military time. And then under hours formats, you can do hours and minutes so that on the time cards, it would display as hours and then minutes, or you can do decimal, where instead for, let's say, for example, we have here eight and a half hours, it would register as 8.5, anything after the decimal point acting as a percentage of the hour. And then under here, the remember me checkboxes check for administrators and managers. This would just be that box at login that you can check off and it will remember your login information. Going to the payroll providers tab, you can see some of the integrations we do offer within on the clock with QuickBooks Online, Gusto and Thompson Reuters. With these, you would just click the connect to the payroll provider button, and then it will have you log into your payroll provider, and then it would have you connect the two accounts. We also have the invite your accountant button. You would click this and you just enter in your accountant's email and it will send them an email saying that they have been invited to take a look at your client's on the clock account. The next section is the employee punch site section. Here we have the option to turn on group punch mode. Now what group punch mode is, is it basically turns this device here into a time clock for your employees. So instead of having to enter in their username or email and password, they would just have to type in their employee number and then they would be able to log in from there. All you have to do to register your device for group punch mode is you just click this register option here and then turn it on. Once you scroll down here, you can see the employee punch site. So what this is, is basically you can select a custom logo and you choose that file so that from now on when your employees are logging into punch it, they wouldn't see the on the clock logo at the top left, they would see your company's logo there. And the schedule option here is if you send out the schedule through our system, it will give you the option of personal or all employees. All employees means that when you send out the schedule, your employee will be able to see all of their coworkers' schedules as well. Personal, they would only be able to see their own schedule. 
And then we do have the Remember Me feature for employees. Again, if they're logging in using a username or email and password, this way it would just remember them so they wouldn't have to type it in each time. Under multilingual prompts, this is basically going to be for our group punch mode. Let's say maybe some of your employees don't speak English. These are the four options that they will see on that page. So you can just go ahead and enter the translation for each of these names in the box. Under this global message section, what they can do is as the administrator, you can go in here and enter the through dates and then enter a message here. Now what this message will be is the next time anyone on your account logs into their system, right there on the homepage, it's going to display this message. So if your employees are struggling taking their breaks, you could always leave them the message, don't forget to take your breaks. And this is what they will see right before they punch in at the beginning of the day. And then just as a reminder, you always, after changing any settings, you want to make sure to click Save Settings so that all of your progress can be remembered. Now jumping into the next hub for most of the settings within On The Clock, you would click the Employee tab and then you can select one of the employees' names. Now here is where we're going to set up all of your employees' settings within On The Clock. Under General Settings, these are going to be most of the required fields you need to fill out within On The Clock. So here we would have the employee's name, their email, again, employees can use usernames, so it wouldn't necessarily have to be an email if they would not like to attach their email. And then you would need to enter in a password for your employee. Mobile phone is also an option. If you enter in the mobile phone or email for your employee, you can send them an invite, which will send your employees their login information. And then here you can edit the employee's number. And we also have the employee group option that we'll jump into a little bit later. The next section is the additional options section. Here we do have the time zone, just kind of like we did with the time clock settings. Now that in the time clock settings, that's going to be for your accounts time zone right here at the top. For time zone, this is going to be what your employee sees when they're punching in. So maybe you have an employee that works in a different state, so that means it's in a different time zone. You would change that time zone here. For manual time entry and adjustment, this will make it so your employee can edit their time cards or enter in time cards so they can enter in a punch in and out time. Allow changing password would allow your employee to change their password. And then we do have the auto adjust for daylight saving switch that goes along with the time zone. And then we do have the allow check-in option that is more so for uh, salaried employees. You're not really looking to track their time, but you just want to know when they appear at work. And then we do have the allow clock in and out option. That is gonna be more so if you're tracking their time. And then below that, we do have the option to assign your employee to a department. And then that way we, you'd be able to filter by that department on the time cards page and see employees only related to that department. And then we also have the option to assign a manager. So this will make it so that this manager, if they have assigned privileges, they would be able to see this employee on their list. And then we do have a note section that if you want to record anything about this employee, you can put it in this here note section and only you would be able to see it. Only you and any manager that has access to the employee's profile. And then we do have the salaried option. Here if you turn this on, you would just enter in how many hours per day your employee works. Then you would just select each of the days that they do work and their start date. So once they become salaried, you would enter in this time so that our time cards will automatically calculate these employees' time cards for you. And you would not need to enter in the end date at the beginning because you don't know when they would stop producing these time cards. And then we do have the overtime and break section. So under overtime after, this is just basically what you would select for your overtime rule that your company follows so that this way our time cards will automatically calculate overtime for you. And then we do have auto deduct breaks here. So this will make it so after your employee has worked five hours, they would get a break of 30 minutes automatically deducted from their time cards. And you do have many options here for when the auto deduct break would occur. And then we have a few options for how long the break duration would be. And then here under job and project costing, we do have the option for your employees to select whether they are use, uh, spending time towards a customer, project task, or job, or if they have the ability to transfer from department to department. With each of these settings, you do have the option to click on the box and you can make them on so that they have the option to clock in under that customer, project, task, or department, or job, or on required so that they cannot punch in until they select one of those options. And then under additional features, we do have group punch mode. If you don't want them to use group punch mode, you can turn that off. Do not allow punching in before. Here you would enter in a time, like it says here at 8 a.m. If you do not want them to punch in before 8 a.m., it will not allow them to. 
and then require punch to confirm is just an additional pop-up when they try to punch in saying, are you sure you'd like to punch in? And then we do have the option for allowing employees to enter tip, bonus, and commission, as well as their mileage. The next tab within the employee profile is PTO settings. Here you have the ability to set up your employee's PTO rules, and by default we do have four categories for PTO, and by default they are named vacation, sick, personal, and holiday, and we'll jump a little bit more into detail with these categories in a different video. The next tab we're going to look at is the alerts and messaging tab. Here you have the option that every time your employee punches in, you can get a text message saying, hey, this employee has punched in for the day or punched out for the day. Now this is an additional charge. It is a base fee of $2 per month for the account. And then every text message that gets sent will be one penny. Allowing punch messages within the employee profile will allow your employee to leave a note at their punch in or punch out so that you as the administrator can see them on the time cards and see any notes that your employee would like to leave. And then the message to employee is similar to the global message in the time clock settings, except this would be specific to the employee you are working with. Here you would enter in the message. Don't forget to take your break. And then you would enter how long you would like that message to appear within their profile. And then we're going to jump into the pay rates tab, where here you can enter in the pay rates for each of these paid categories within on the clock, what they make per hour. Again, this is going to be for your hourly employees. This is not going to be for your salaried employees. Then the final tab we're going to look at within the employee profile is the location and security tab. Here we do have the mobile rules in GPS section where you can click on here and this will allow your employee to punch in using their cellular device. And here we have the option of record GPS coordinates. That'll make it so if your employee allows us to track them, they'll get a little pop up in their app and they can click allow. And then we would be able to see their GPS location on the dashboard above. Record GPS and require GPS to punch will make it so it is mandatory for them to share their location if you want them to punch in. Record GPS and warn if not at GPS punch location will make it so when you set up a location with our, within our system that we're going to take a look at here in a minute, if they're not punching in within that location, it's going to send them a warning and it's going to send you a warning. With record GPS and disable punch if not at GPS location, this will make it so the employee cannot punch in at all unless they are within one of the locations designated within your account. To set up a location within on the clock, you would click this settings tab and then go to locations. And then you can click new location. You would enter in the name of the location and turn on the true GPS punch location switch and scroll down and you can enter the address of this location right here at the top of the map and you can change how big you would like the location to be. Back to the location and security tab, we do have the device and browser authorization where you can turn this switch on and then here you will see a list of devices that your employee has logged into and then you would be able to turn on one of these switches and this will make it so that they can punch in using that device. And then we do have IP authorization That'll make it so they have to be connected to a specific IP address for them to punch in. The next section we're going to look at is the employee schedule. So you would just click the schedule tab, go to employee schedule, and here we have our employee schedule. And it is this simple. All you have to do is click one of these empty boxes, and then you can select the location the employee would be at, the department, job, customer, project, or task that you would like them to work on that day, the date you can confirm right there. And we do have pre-made shifts here where you can click here and create pre-made shifts. So if you use that shift a lot, just pre-make it so then from now on you don't have to type in the times. Or if it's uh, more of a irregular time, you can click advanced options and you can select the start time for the shift and the end time for the shift. And then you can also label it. This will make it a different color and you can customize the labels here. And if you want to leave any notes for the employee, you can leave them here. And then all you do is click save and you can see that shift appear here. All you have to do to copy that shift is click on it, click the edit pencil and you can click copy the shift. Then you can select which employees you'd like to copy it to and which dates you'd like to copy it to. So we can select all employees here and maybe we want to copy it to a few different dates. You can copy now and we can see that these shifts did copy to the new dates. And then all you have to do to publish this to your employees is click this publish button right here. 
We do have a few options of how you would like to view it. You can do by day, by week, and by week that'll make it start on Monday. Work week will go by what you set up in the time clock settings as your start day of pay period. Pay period will also show your pay period, and then month will go by month. The last section we're going to go over today is our time cards. So you just go ahead and click the time cards here and we're just going to kind of go over the filters here. Here you can select the pay period that you would like to view. With custom you can select uh, up to a year's worth of time that you would like to pull up and it would give you the total time for those employees. And then for dates it is similar to custom dates. You would select up to a year's worth of time but it would show you as divided by the pay period rather than a total sum for that time. And then for employees, you can filter by a specific employee if you only want to see their time cards. You can filter by department if you only want to see time cards related to that department. You can filter by manager for any employees that are assigned to that manager, you would see them here. Or if you want to see jobs, you can click here and select the job you'd like to see. And if there was any time related to that job, during this pay period, you would see it below. And then we do have the option to print and email your time cards, as well as export CSV. This is gonna kinda of turn your time cards into an Excel file that many payroll providers do accept. And lastly, if you're looking to add a time card to the time cards page, you would click this add date option. You can select the date, select the employee, and then you would click add punch. You can enter their punch in time, and their punch out time and click save. It is that easy. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos about on the clock. I'll see you real soon.